in the previous video, uh, we saw that uh, reversible adiabatic compressors and reversible isothermal compressors have different work input requirements and that reversible adiabatic compressors consume more work than reversible isothermal compressors. And uh, so let us look at the implications of these in uh, practical compressors. Uh, when we say reversible devices, these are approximations or idealizations because we do know that we do not have uh, fully internally reversible processes and that in real devices, there will be, um, there will be uh, irreversibilities associated in, uh, with, the, with the flow and with the compression process in real devices. Uh, so that is one uh, that we have to keep in mind. The other one is uh, if we look at a reversible isothermal compression, it is clear that we have to compress the ideal gas in an isothermal manner. That is normally when we compress a gas, its temperature and pressure rise. However, in an isothermal compression, we are compressing the gas without allowing the temperature to rise, which means that we have to compress it very slowly or infinitely slowly such that um, once we compress it by a, a very, very infinitesimal amount, uh, we have to wait until the temperature gets back to what it was and then continue compressing. In other words, we have to compress very, very slowly or a quasi-static manner, which is not practical for most engineering applications and devices where we are trying to achieve a certain flow rate of a fluid uh, within certain constraints. The other constraint is that because this is isothermal, we, have, we, we would like very, very quick heat transfer between the system and the surroundings such that any, um, there is no change in temperature or there is no increase in temperature as we compress the gas. That is only possible if we have very large areas for heat transfer, both of which uh, are impractical in everyday engineering devices. So although uh, we would have the minimum work requirement for an iso isothermal compressor, uh, it's very difficult to achieve isothermal compressors in everyday life. If we make compressors without paying attention to the heat transfer, we would probably end up making a compressor that is very close to an adiabatic compressor. That is, no heat is lost from the compressor because heat transfer takes time. And so if the throughput of the compressor is quite high, then uh, we would not have any heat transfer from the compressor. And we would end up more or less uh, following this line uh, of course, this is for a reversible adiabatic. We would have a reversible adiabatic, but we would be closer to this line uh, than we would be to this curve, right? And so, um, in, in practical compressors, typically what is done is there is some arrangement to lose heat. So, for example, there are fins provided on the outside of compressors that then lose some of the heat. Uh, they are not isothermal, but they are not adiabatic either. So, uh, they are somewhere between adiabatic and isothermal. And so they follow a curve that looks more or less uh, like this, which is uh, somewhere between uh, uh, adiabatic, reversible adiabatic and reversible isothermal. And um, this process in general uh, cannot be, um, we cannot write equations for this process because it is particular to the process, to the device, etc. But in general, uh, it can be uh, thought of as PV to the N as e is equal to constant, where uh, N is a number between uh, 1 and gamma. So remember that uh, 1 is for isothermal, gamma is for adiabatic, and N being somewhere between adiabatic and isothermal uh, is the exponent of V, and this exponent of V has a value between 1 and gamma, right? And uh, by doing this, then uh, what we are end up, uh, what we end up doing is we end up saving some of the work input. So, uh, for example, in this diagram, uh, this particular pump has saved uh, this area, which would have otherwise otherwise been the work requirement for a reversible adiabatic compressor. So, this process is called a polytropic process. So most engineering compressors and most devices that we can buy today are in fact polytropic compressors. And uh, of course, the N value is, uh, we cannot know the N value a priori. It depends on the particular compressor. It depends on the operating conditions. It depends on um, you know, the design of the compressor, 
the flow rate of the gas and so on. Uh, but if we can uh, we can assume that that n value will be somewhere between one and gum, right? Sometimes uh, it is not adequate to have a polytropic compression process uh, because it would still consume a whole lot more work than isothermal. And there are maybe other reasons to split the compression process into two. That is, have a two-stage or a three-stage compression. And when that is done, it is uh, typical to have something called an intercooler. That is, a stage which is a cooling stage between two stages of compression. So let's look at how that looks like and what that uh, translates into on a PV diagram. So um, sometimes, uh, as I, uh, as we discussed, sometimes we want to split the compression process um, into two or more devices. So uh, this is, let us say, stage one compressor. So at the outlet of this compressor, uh, we will have uh, gases that are at a higher pressure, let's call this P1, uh, let's call this P2, right? And uh, so it would go through something called an intercooler. And this intercooler would bring the temperature down, um, preferably at constant pressure, so there's not much of a pressure drop across the intercooler. And so uh, this now enters the second stage of compression and then uh, we get uh, then this let's say is stage is state 3 and this let's say is state 4. So P4 is the final pressure that we need. Uh, this is state 1 and this is state 2. This is state 3 here after the intercooler and then state 4 is after the second stage compressor. Um, there could of course be more than two stages, in which case there may be more than one intercooler. So we can take this uh, through another intercooler and have a third stage if necessary. And so when we compress to very, very high pressures, we typically have stages, um, not just for intercooling and achieving higher efficiencies, but also because the construction of the compressor is dependent on the average pressure that exists inside the compressor. And so sometimes having two stages or three stages simplifies compressor design and that is helpful, right? Um, so let us look at how this process looks like now on a PV diagram. So let us say that uh, we start out at state one at a pressure P1 and we want to reach pressure uh, 4, that is P4, that is the final pressure that we want to reach. Uh, and if we did a, an adiabatic, reversible adiabatic compression, we would go from state 1 uh, to a state that may be somewhere here. Right. So let us call that state 5. So this is a reversible adiabatic or an isentropic process uh, for an ideal gas. And we also know that for isothermal process, um, it would look somewhat like that. right? Um, Although this consumes a lot less work, uh, we also know that it is not practical to build, whereas this is the simplest to build, uh, but consumes a whole lot more work than is necessary. So if we do an intermediate uh, a two-stage compression, then we are splitting the compression into P1 to P2, and then P3 to P4, with P2 and P3 being equal, assuming that there's not much of a pressure drop inside the intercooler. So let us assume that there is an intermediate pressure uh, P2 equal to P3 <coughs> and that we follow a polytropic process in each of the compressors. So we follow the polytro polytropic process until we get to uh, pressure P2 or P3 because those two are equal and let me plot it in a different color. This is a polytropic, polytropic compressor 
stage 1 compressor and then we have an intercooler which um, does not change the pressure but changes the temperature it cools the gas down and when that happens we know uh, that the volume decreases and so there is a decrease in volume and then uh, we go in second stage compression which would take us to a stage somewhere there. So, uh, let us call this stage uh, 2, state 2, this is state 3 and this is state 4. And uh, in the hypothetical isothermal compressor, we would get to stage state 6, whereas in a two stage, two stage polytropic compression process, we go from 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3 is, a, is the intercooling and 3 to 4 is the second polytropic compressor um, which is uh, employed to get us from pressure P3 to pressure at P4. Right? Now, if we look at it, um, we have the work done or the work requirement by these two compressors together is this area under the curve, area under the curve V d P. And so, we can see readily that this is actually less than the area under the um, integral P, uh, P V to the gamma curve, uh, in, uh, the integral V d P for the reversible adiabatic curve. And so, the uh, we have ended up saving this energy or the saving this work done under this shaded area here. So, uh, for various purposes including for energy efficiency, uh, typically compressors, uh, especially when compressing to very, very high pressures such as 25 bar uh, or anything more than 15 bar, typically employ uh, more than one stage compression process. In, uh, in the next video, we will look at what uh, complexities we obtain when uh, we, so far we have worked with reversible devices. Of course, real devices are not reversible and so we will look at how to handle irreversibilities in compressors, turbines and pumps.